Oh, <laughs> we're recording. Okay, sorry. Didn't realize where I already started. So I am using, uh, I'm shaking the, the uh, table. I'm using a new platform. I'm using Zoom to record um, the meeting. Okay. So that way you can, uh, because the previous program I was using has caused uh, for some lectures a high pitched squeal and uh in the middle of the recording and it's totally ruining the recording and it's like not good so uh i was talking to my wife and who is smarter than me and uh i was like i don't know what, what i'm gonna do i need i guess i need a new program um and she goes well you should just use zoom just record it on zoom because uh i like the, the ability to, to share my screen and um then i can just post the uh, the, the recording and i'm like brilliant brilliant babe okay good idea so that's what we're doing i am um using zoom i'm going to share my screen we're, we're going to go over this week's work and do all that kind of good stuff okay here we go let's see um i'm going to begin with this, this week's stuff so Let's go to Word document. 1102 schedule. Okay. Um, so this week is week four, how to conduct research and incorporate quotes. Okay. And you are going to complete the library research assignment and you are going to write a rough draft. Okay. Um, this says you can complete the library research assignment over your story. Okay. Um, so Let's go to, I'm going to do a new, new share web page. Let's see, where's our, oh, I don't even have it open yet. Okay, well, hold on. So um, I'm gonna go over with you how to perform the research that you will need to incorporate into your paper, okay? Um, and this week we are doing a, uh, you are turning in sort of um, the, uh, you're turning in an assignment that demonstrates that you understand how to perform research. This um, assignment can be on the paper you're going to write, or it can be about, um, so here you go, yeah. Um, it's under lesson two, under lesson two, Go down here to how to write a literary analysis essay. Okay. No, that's that's stupid. Uh, incorporating research. All right, is there? Let's see here. That's not what I was looking for. lesson one okay finding sources assignment there it is okay there it is all right um so lesson one finding sources assignment so you're going to read the chapter of fiction as a genre and then you're going to go to the college library site which i'm going to show you today uh click on the the 1102 live guide after viewing the tutorial click on the practice researching and select the literary reference center all of that I'm going to do okay in class um for each of the following stories find an article from the reference book titled master plots in the letter reference center and copy paste the mla citation to a word document that is also in mla formatting as in it has the correct header and is double spaced so the um uh the default short stories that um, this assignment has you doing some random research for is over the story of an hour, the passing of, of Grandison and the open boat, okay? Now, if you want to instead find three articles that deal with the short story that you are writing about uh, and that you are analyzing, then you can replace these three stories, to, all right, with your story, okay? Um, you can find uh, one or 
two or three articles that that are related to what you are researching okay and um and as we see i'm, I'm going to show you different ways of applying research to your paper okay so uh hopefully by the end of this lecture you will have a better understanding of um this assignment and what you're going to be doing okay all right um and then here it is a sample of what your you should download this and put your name here whatever your name is double click up here put your last name all in caps okay and then you're going to put your citations in this document um how about this news <coughs> excuse me hand sanitizer i ain't spreading nothing okay click click okay rub 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 you just, so you're going to put your citations which i'm going to show you how to get in a moment here in this document and you're going to save your document under your name and you're going to submit it as your assignment okay so let's get to understanding how to um of what assignment of this assignment of how to use research okay and because the, the research you do is going to make its way into your paper I have a PowerPoint, as usual. Slideshow. Make sure I'm sharing this. All right, so grammar and research. Using research and writing. Every paper that you write this semester will have to have research, okay? Um, there's two ways of, of using research. One is called supportive research. And this is research that directly supports your analysis because the author shares your perspective. So for example, your topic is about how the main character in the yellow wallpaper becomes insane because of, of the setting, okay? Supportive research is research in which a, another person has written about how the main character goes insane, the main character of the yellow wallpaper, okay? So like this, this, uh, this article, Haunted House, Haunted Heroin, Female Gothic Closets in the Yellow Wallpaper, okay? This piece of research, this article is actually written about the Yellow Wallpaper, okay? And this lady, Margaret Davison, or Carol Davison, she believes that the main character uh, goes crazy. And you are writing about how the main character goes crazy. So this article by Carol Davison, totally supports your idea, okay? So sometimes we find supportive research. Sometimes we find research that totally um, connects to what we are talking about, okay? But we're not always that lucky though, especially if some of you are reading contemporary stories, okay? Um, like, so for example, the story that I posted uh, that I had y'all read, uh, Strawberry Spring, there's not a lot of research or academic articles written about that specific story because that's just like one of hundreds of short stories that Stephen King has written, okay? And usually if people are going to write about Stephen King, they write about his novels or his movies. They don't ever really, really write about short stories. So if you were going to be wanting to analyze a story that was like, that's a lesser known story, you might not be able to find supportive research because no one might has ever written about that story. So in your case, you would need to find um, what's called topical research, okay? Topical research is research that indirectly supports your analysis um, because you apply the research to your topic, okay? It doesn't directly support it. Like supportive research is actually about the story that you, or the novel or whatever that you're writing about. Topical research takes um, it takes um, a topic from what you want to write about and you apply it to your story. Okay, so again, your topic, your example, for example, 
your topic is about how the main character in the yellow wallpaper becomes insane because of the setting. That's what you want to argue, okay? If you can't find an actual piece of research about that, then, and then instead you find something that's on the topic of, of in this case, going insane, okay? Um, so like this article by Jingyi Wang, so it's called Social Isolation in Mental Health, a Conceptual and Methodological Review. So social isolation means being by oneself. And in the yellow wallpaper, the main character, she is by herself. She's alone, okay? And so uh, this article is about how, it's about the bad things that can happen to people uh, in terms of their mental health when they're left alone, okay? And in this, we have this quote by... Wang. Uh, previous studies have identified an association between loneliness and depression, suicidal behavior, personality disorders, and psychosis. Okay. Well, if anyone read the yellow wallpaper, you would know that these descriptors totally fit the main character. Okay. So like, even though this article is not about the yellow wallpaper, but it is about something that's on topic with the yellow wallpaper. Okay. And so you could use this research and apply it to your story, which in fact is the main type of research I want you to use. It's, uh, it's, it's smarter research, okay? I mean, you don't have to have much of a brain to, uh, to, find, to use research that's about your story. Because essentially what you're doing is you're not even really having original ideas. You're just rewording what someone else said about the story you're reading which is part of the reason why I wanted you to pick your own story and hopefully picked one that was lesser known. Using topical research is much more intellectual, all right? It, it, it's much more difficult because you're having to see how two things relate, even though they, they are not connected, okay? So um, I, I would applaud more people using topical research to apply to their short story rather than finding research that's actually talking about the short story okay okay so like when you when you decide uh so step one is making sure that you've read your short story step two is thinking about what you want to say about your short story before even looking at any research you should be able to come up with some things that you want to say so like themes you know ideas this story deals with race this story deals with um uh Poverty, or this deals with violence towards women, okay? Come up with some things that you want to talk about. And then you can start doing your, your library, library research, okay? Now, the school wants you to really use Biblio Guides and Galileo, okay? So uh, I'm going to go over that, even though, honestly, Galileo and, Bibli and Biblio Guides is not really applicable to a whole lot of things outside of writing about books okay um so if you were to use biblio guides you would go to the link that says libguides which is um on my page okay in the lessons and you would use galileo which is located in the library tab um i'll probably show you in a moment okay um or you can use reliable web sources you don't have to just use galileo and libguides okay like uh, in reliable web sources are websites that uh, are uh, that have a whole bunch of people who are editing it. Okay, so usually, usually um, news um, sort websites, um, journals websites, magazine websites, websites that are not blogs. Okay, unless the web the blog website is, is run by a published author who um they just some, sometimes authors will just will, will have one web page where they'll post all of the different articles that they have published in many different manuscripts but all on one page so it's like this this person um guy, this guy Coates okay um he he publishes with the New York Times the the Atlantic uh the Atlantic uh the economist uh he's published stuff in his own books okay he has a website where he puts all of his articles on his website despite no matter where they were 
actually originally published all right so like that's reliable things that are like not reliable or like reddit um or other uh fan sites uh individual blogs that show no type of profession um in the field um of uh in which they're writing about okay but like if you go to um if you go to a film critics website and they've been published they're a published author on many other newspapers and magazines and stuff then that's that, that's fine okay so like i'll show you in a moment how you'll go to literary reference center okay and you'll click on literary reference center plus you'll type in the story that you are studying to see if they have anything listed there okay you'll click on advanced search you'll type in maybe if you were if you're trying to because you know for our paper you're writing about theme you're writing about a critical lens all right you are going to to analyze what what um a what, what the story has to say about either race or gender or about uh social economic status uh who's in power okay and so you, you can type in a element that you want to discuss and then see if you find any you know articles that uh that address these um issues okay and so then you will need to get the mla citation which i'll show you also what to do how to do that you will get the mla the mla citation for the article and you'll copy and paste it then you'll read the article to see if there's any quotes in it that you can that you might want to use in your uh paper and then you should like copy and paste that uh quote someplace you know um in a word document so that way you have it close by so that way you can integrate it into your paper okay okay so before we go into all that screen sharing and stop yes i, I want to stop screen sharing i want to One second. All right. Um, on Zoom. Oh, here we go. Okay, share my screen. Okay, so um, I go to the library through my apps. So get to the library. And um, I go up to Galileo. And here we can do a variety of of um search uh, yeah searches okay so let's see here um like this is already stored here from when I was doing some um practice so the story of an hour okay if I want to search that type in story of an hour. And that's an older story, so there's a lot of stuff written about that. Um, and I'll show you, I'll show you what to do when you're when you're stuck and you're and you can't um, find something. Okay, I go over when I when I do Galileo. Okay, I go over here and I go to my limits. Okay, I want to make sure that it is a full text article. I don't want I don't I don't want a link to something. Okay. Um, I don't care about reading anything from 1790 personally because I don't think that's about story of an hour since story of an hour was written a uh, hundred years after 1790, and then I don't necessarily want to read anything from 1900. So I'm going to move this up to like 1950. Okay, especially when there's when there's over one million uh, now. <laughs> wow, five million. There's only there's there's five million results for 
the story of an hour. Okay. But that's also doing keyword. That means that like the keyword story keyword of and keyword and hours. I'm going to, I'm going to go to title. I'm looking for a title. Okay. And then I'm gonna go down here and I'm not looking for news about the serving hour. And I'm not, I'm not looking for, for reviews. I'm not looking for somebody to review a book. I'm looking for articles, academic articles. And there's only 50 of those right here. This tells me how many, how many of these there are. And that's something easy for me to comb through. So I'm going to click on academic journals. Okay, so I have limited my... All right. Uh, so then we have, we start going through. And some of these are not applicable at all to what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. Here's one. It's a man's word. Re-examination of the female perspective in children's desert body in the story of an hour. Ooh, I like that. Female perspective. That kind of connects to a feminist analysis. Okay, which sounds good. So I would click on this one. Okay. And, and um, I don't want, you don't ever pull any type of uh, quotes from the abstract. Okay. This is like a summary of what you're going to be reading. So let's say I want to read this. I click on the PDF full text. And I read it. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. This is exactly what I want to talk about. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So let's say I'll, I'm going to use this for my research. I'm going to go over here. You see this little icon says site, site, not psych, site. Click on it. And I'm going to scroll down to find MLA. Because we publish stuff in MLA. See this? MLA. Modern Language Association. And I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to highlight. I want to highlight. Highlight. I'm going to right click. I want to copy. I'm going to go to my document that I opened up. Um, literary citation MLA sample. Okay, and I'm going to paste. Now look, when I pasted it, it has this weird, it's highlighted gray. So I'm gonna highlight it all and make, and make sure that there is no, um, that, oh, I, if you go to this A, you can totally erase all type of formatting. There we go, okay. Now, this doesn't look good. This is still ugly. It's not the way it should look. And it's different than this. Is, this right here is Times New Roman 12. And this down here is Calibri 11. So I'm going to highlight this. And I really hate that. My, 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 I need to change my view. That's, that's really annoying. I, I really like my toolbar. I won't get into that right now. Um, I'm going to change this to Times New Roman. I'll change this to 12. I'm going to go to my paragraph because this is supposed to be double space. It's not double space right now. Look at this. Oh my God. After should be zero. Line spacing should be double. Okay, cool. And now I need to indent because citations should, uh, the first line should go all the way to the end, just like this. Okay. It should be. The first line should be matched up with your with your header, but the lines after it need to be indented. Okay, we don't number our citations; we indent them. But the problem is, though, if I put my my cursor right on the second line and I hit Tab, it all moves over. That's a problem. Okay, so if I want to indent this line and this line and this line and this line, I have to go to the end of the previous line and hit tab and it indents. And then I go to the end of this line and I indent the end of this line and I indent the end of this line and I hit tab, boom. That's my first 
source, okay? All right. So that's how you do it with Galileo. Let's say, mm, yeah, you know, uh, you can't find anything with Galileo. All right, Galileo is not working for you. Let's say you're writing about like Strawberry Spring, and that's not in. That's not you can't find anything dealing with Stephen King in Galileo. Okay. Then you might have to go to thinking about a um, topical research. Okay. For me, like I think about how you know in um, in uh, this is a horror story. I want to write about how the women were just attacked in the story. This seems kind of like misogynistic, you know, hatefulness towards women. Someone type in misogyny and horror stories. Okay, so there's there's sexism in hard novels. Okay, I mean this is a. I'm not necessarily writing a not about a novel. I'm writing about a story, but I might have to use that one because a novel is still similar to a story. Eleven forms of misogyny and horror media. All that incorporates all types of whether it's movies or books. Okay, um, sexism and horror stories. So any these might be seem really interesting. Okay, The Guardian. Look at what who who wrote it. The Guardian. That's a good um, that's a good source. The Guardian. See, I mean, look, the Guardian's been around for 200 years. What? That's a long time. Okay. So, like, this is something that could be used. Ugh, Twilight. Um, if I read this and I liked what this had to say, then I might use this. That sounds great. Okay. So let's say I read this and I really liked it. Sexism and hard novels. The real monsters aren't the ones you think. Okay. Say I read this and I enjoyed this. Okay. But now I need to, like, I need to cite it. But like, how do you cite from a website that doesn't give you the citation? And this needs to be in MLA formatting. What am I gonna do? So what you do is go up to your web cursor, okay? And um, you go to Easy Bib, Easy Bib. And if this is not posted, I'm if I didn't post this already, I'll post this uh, link to our. Um, to our class, okay. Create citations. I need to hurry up. Third period is about to start. Okay. Create citations. Hmm. You will need to copy the. Uh, oops. You need to copy the um, address. Go on to website. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Paste. Hey. Hey. So. Pause. Oh. All right. So then you. Uh, sorry, I had a quick interlooper. Go to search. Okay. I, I pasted in my address. Okay, boom, there it is. No, that's not it. That's not it. Uh, yes, this is it right here. Okay. Stephanie Meyer, the page four or five books, The Guardian. Okay. Twi okay. So let's say this is it. I'll set site. Yep, 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 yep. Continue. Bump, 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 bump. Yep, complete citation. MLA, yep, that's right. It's loading. All right, all you gotta do is copy citation. Yeah, I don't need all that. That's it. And then I'm gonna go to, back to my document, which is here. And then I'm gonna hit, Paste. Okay. All right. Um, but once again, the, the, the formatting is wrong. So I need to make sure I go to home paragraph. I need to uh, make zero after it, zero before, double spaced. Okay. And then make sure that it's times 12. Yep. There we go. Great. Okay. There it is. Okay. I'm good. All right. So, um,
that's what you do if you need if you need to find a website okay or uh you need to find a um or use galileo okay for your sources now what you do once you get your sources so let's go to new share All right, let's see if we can get through 10 slides. Hey, I'm gonna go kind of fast because we're already hitting like the 30, almost 40 minute mark, okay? I'm gonna post this PowerPoint, okay? The rest of this stuff really you don't need me to actually go over because it's all, I don't need to demonstrate, it's all pretty evident here, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go over like, once you've done your research and you've read and you've, you wanna pull out quotes, okay? What do you do with those quotes? Well, here you go, okay? Titles and quotation marks. In your paper, in your, in your rough draft, when you're talking about short stories, okay? Short stories go in quotation marks, as in the, the titles. All the important words, the big words are capitalized, the short words are not, okay? So like the story of an hour, that's a quotation, that, that, that title goes in quotation marks. If you reference a, um, an article, the article's name goes into quotation marks. If you reference a uh, title of a book or the title of a newspaper or magazine, those go in italics, okay? So the book is in italics, but like, let's say um, the chapter or the short story that's in that book is in quotation marks, okay? Um, so like some of my kids are reading um, an ex a chapter from this book called Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl. The chapter is called Fat. That would be in quotation marks. This short story is actually a short story, all right, from her life. This would be in quotation marks. This is a short story. I keep whistling through my teeth. With the book, though, if I said that in her book, blah, 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 okay, then this would be in italics. Same thing with, like, if I was, like, if I said The Guardian, okay, uh, in Nora's article, horror movies are misogynistic quotation marks which was published in the guardian and the guardian would be italics okay articles and short stories are in quotation marks books and magazines and newspaper titles are in um italics okay when you're using quotation marks commas go inside of the quotation marks this first example is incorrect it's not in story of an hour quotation mark, and then comma. The comma goes inside of the quotation mark. Do not forget that, okay? Same thing with periods. Periods go inside of the quotation marks. You will lose points if you put the period on the outside of a quotation mark, okay? Make sure you read this and follow this. In-text citations, okay? So, um, so you got to make sure if you're quoting somebody, you have to include their last name at the end of, of the quote, uh, or it, you have to mention their name when you're leading into the quote, all right? But their name has to be mentioned at some point, either in the sentence leading into the quote or at the end of the, of the quotation, all right? And if they, there is a page number associated to, like, if you pull something and an article, a PDF, and it has a page number, then you need to include that page number. If you pull something from um, like an internet uh, article that's been published and there are no page numbers, then you don't have to include a page number, okay? But like if you notice these two examples, Wordsworth stated that romantic poetry was marked by spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, okay? Wordsworth's name is put up here, so therefore that's fine. But if you don't use Wordsworth, if you don't use the author's name in the sentence, like here, romantic poetry is characterized by the spontaneous overflow, or overflow of powerful feelings, then you include the author's name in a um, parentheses, okay? If there's a page number, add a page number. If there is no page number, you don't have anything there. And you definitely don't have a comma between the two of them. There's no, there's no punctuation between the, 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 uh, the author's name and the page number. Okay. All right. Always write in third person. Okay. Uh, let's not do like, I think, she thinks, he thinks. It's always third person. Okay. 
And then always write in present tense. Okay. So like when Janine sees the guard, she hopes to get his attention. Present tense. Unless in the story, it's past tense. If the story is written in past tense, then that's different. But if the story is written in present tense, then always be talking about it in present tense. Don't say when Janine saw the guard, she tried to get his attention, okay? Um, because it's happening, actually happening in the story in present tense. So therefore you write it in present tense. All right, integrating quotes. You cannot have drop quotes. Quotes that stand by themselves as complete sentences, these are drop quotes. You cannot have these. This is incorrect. Incorrect. Okay. Um, always use a signal phrase to lead into a quote. A quote cannot be a sentence all on its own. All right. You have to have. Um, so, like, for example, here, here are some examples. There are many examples of self analysis in Plato's philosophy, period. Quote, the unexamined life is not worth living. Quote, period. That's incorrect. That is a drop quote. You see how we have a sentence here. We have a period, and then we have a quote all by itself. Okay, that, that quote is, is sandwiched between a period and a period. That's incorrect. All right? It's incorrect. There's another one. Drop a quote. This is incorrect. We have a period, then we have a quote, quotation mark, then we have a quotation mark, and a period. That's incorrect. Cannot do that. Notice this one. Plato thinks people should analyze their own lives because... We have no period because, quote, the unexamined life is not worth living, period. That's an integrated quote. That is correct. You will lose points if you have dropped quotes. If you have quotes that are just sprinkled into your essay without being integrated into it, an actual sentence. The way you integrate quote is by, oops, is by doing things like um, the author points out, the author comments, the author analyzes, the author says, okay, and you can replace the author with the actual name, okay? You gotta have verbs that lead into your quote, you cannot just have a quote. All right, so for example, this is a quote from Simone de Beauvoir, all right? She's a, uh, uh, she was a writer in France, and this is a quote from one of her books, The Second Sex. This, this quote, came from page 691, okay? Let's say I wanted to use this quote to analyze a short story, okay? This is how it would look. This is the quote, and then this is my example of, of, of the, the usage of that quote. So this would be like a paragraph that could come from an essay analyzing the short story, like, like an essay that, that you write. Um, so this is all my writing, and I, and I, I, use, I integrate quotes from, from Simone, and I integrate quotes from the short story. Let's follow along. Chopin's Miss Mallard represents the masochistic woman who automatically goes into a self-repressive state to fulfill her role as the woman-turned-object wife. The French feminist philosopher Simone de Beauvoir believes that women have forever been giving up their identities, much in a self-loathing way in order to conform to the societal requirements of marriage. In The Story of an Hour, the heroine, Miss Mallard, is a lady who is, quote, young with a fair, calm face, end quote. But her youthfulness cannot save her from the effects of, quote, repression, end quote, that brought, quote, lines, end quote, to her face, Chopin too. The repression that she experiences is from having to, quote, enter into a state of humiliation, end quote at becoming a, quote, object of someone else, end quote, de Beauvoir, which in this case is Brintley, a man that seems nice enough and who, quote, she had loved sometimes, but she, uh, but often she had not, end quote, by, quote, allowing herself to be objectified, end quote, in order to receive some sense of meaning, Miss Mallard has to repress her inner soul and sense of herself. Being, quote, alienated in herself, end quote, keeps her from being, quote, possessed of self-assertion, end quote, which she eventually comes to realize as, quote, the strongest impulse of her being, end quote. It isn't until the reality of her husband's death and the release of her captivity that she began to drink in, quote, the elixir of life, end quote, 
Her desire to be loved by a man is in absolute conflict with her desire to love herself. So these quotes were um, sprinkled into my sentences. And in fact, I didn't even use really long, complete sentences of, of, of quotes. I used just individual words and phrases and integrate them into my own sentences. All right. There are no dropped quotes here. Every single quote is integrated in a, in a part of a sentence that I wrote. It's exactly the way that you need to do it as well. All right. Great. I, I, I reached the end. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so uh, that's that. Okay. You will be completing the work here in um, under lesson one. There will be a little Dropbox uh, submission link for the finding sources assignment. All right. Um, if you have any questions after watching this and reading the PowerPoint, um, send me an email. All right, everyone. I will see you later. Okay. Bye-bye.